five. What's up? Okay. <laughs> Um, I guess I jumped the gun there. I do that all the time when I sing songs on the, that come on the radio. Um, yeah, I'll jump the gun every time. I'll start singing, and it's like, oops, it wasn't time yet. Yes, yeah, I got to work on my timing. Anyways, I was um, combing this guy out here. I'm about to wash him. Now, the importance of combing uh, the dog out, you know, getting this stuff out before the before washing him. I explained this a lot in you know a lot of my videos, but I believe, see, it's already so much silkier and softer just, just by combing it a little bit, just by combing the fine, invisible hairs. If you were just to hold up the hair individually, you can't even see it. It's invisible. See that? It's invisible. You can't even barely see it. But when you get them in a bun you know if you get a group of them together then you start to see it but you can feel the difference immediately once that fuzzy dead hair is combed out of the skin then it actually the coat feels much silkier and softer because that live hair left behind is actually silky and soft it's just that we couldn't we, we didn't see the silky soft or we could we didn't notice it because this hair all of this hair here is rough now see on the bottom, I was coming this way, right? So this side, this is what was underneath the skin. You see that? I'm using their comb, but anyways, see that? See all of that? That was underneath their skin. So if you think about the way the skin is structured, all of that, a lot, a, a big portion of the hair shaft is actually inside their pores. So that was in their skin. So that's why it's so necessary for us to help get it out for them. Because this is not like a lab's coat where the hair has like enough, it's short enough and it's strong enough to push out the old dead hair. There, This type of coat is not like that. So uh, we have to see how it catches because it's catching on the, the bundles of the old dead rough hair. It's ready to come out. And as the comb goes through, it will catch some of that. Oh, sorry about that, buddy. And pull it out for him. See that? And now this rough hair here will start to feel much silkier and cleaner and softer. And here's the point. The point is, as this stuff comes out of his skin, as I'm brushing it out of his skin, it's creating room now in those pores for the water and the shampoo and the conditioner to get in those pores and really clean it out well, you know, condition it properly. And that that's what we're doing here. We're getting out all that skin dirt, you know, along with these bundles of hair. So as this hair comes out, what I'll notice sometimes is I'll notice like um, dandruff, like dander starting to come out, white, little white beads. And in the bathtub, I'll see black beads, like little black grains of sand, you know? And when I comb him out before the bath, I'll notice, look, look right there, right there. Little white, you know, like little grains of sand almost. Let's see if I can get it, because it disappears. But right here too, you see right here? You could, you could almost see it all over the place. Oh, look at that. Hold on one second, let me do like that, get it out and then show the camera. Oh shoot, wow, well, I don't wanna zoom up on my freaking pores, my pores, never mind my pores, look at the dog's pores. But you see that little, like little grains of sand and you can actually feel it along his skin. There's little bumps, you know, see that? When you actually get in there, you can see it. You see that? Look at that, that's all coming out as I comb him. So that's the importance for me, in my opinion, of doing this and combing him out, just giving him a really quick thorough comb out. Now, here's the thing, I gotta, I gotta control myself because I get OCD about this. As I'm, as I'm uh, combing him out sometimes, and even in the sh in the, when I'm washing them, I'll go through, I'll, I'll start lathering the, the shampoo, right? And I'll start you know, working it, oh, and I can feel it. I can feel all this stuff coming out, right? And then I'll get here in the toes, and I'll start getting all the crusty stuff out from in between the toe toenails, and 
right there on the toe bed, toenail, right at the nail bed. Look at that. So I'll get that stuff out, you know, and I'll start cleaning that out real good, each toenail. And then I'll look in 15 minutes have gone by. All I have done is clean that one foot. <laughs> so I got to watch myself <clears throat> because <clears throat> his owner today even asked me like, hey, June, you know, last time, you know, it did take a while. And, you know, he was like really kind of, you know, tired afterwards because he's an old man. I've been grooming him for a long time. You know, and I was like, oh, man, yeah, you know, like a like a 12 hour session will do that to you. <laughs> I'm kidding. It didn't take me 12 hours. It took me four, I think, last time, but still. Um, because I spent about two hours of it doing this. You know, just I would I would bring out different tools and start hand stripping a little bit, you know. But I got to remind myself, um, I'm, I'm just trying to make an improvement. See, I keep telling her, like, my, my, if I'm a perfectionist of anything, it's for me, I'm trying to be perfect about making sure their skin is clean, getting this out of their skin, making sure their skin is nice and clear and clean and it can breathe and function properly because then the skin will heal itself. And because and, the skin is a living, breathing organ, you know, it has its own flora. It's like a, like a rainforest or something, you know? So sorry about that, guys, the shaking. I was trying to adjust the camera angle. But anyways, yeah, so... The skin is always working to heal itself, and so it's always working to get this stuff out by itself, but it needs our help, especially this with this type of hair, this type of coat. It needs our help, you know? So we're, we're, we go through and we get that, those rough dead hairs out for them, and as it comes out, it actually does help them feel better. Right, Teddy? Mm-hmm. He's actually a stoic. He's, very, he's not affectionate at all. His, his younger brother, Wally, is much more affectionate. He'll kiss me and everything. But he's always been a little bit more, he's a stoic, you know. <laughs> but anyways, I wanted to show how I do the ears later. So when I do the haircut after the bath, I'm going to show how I do the, how I tip the Biva, Biva ears. And that's how you pronounce the name of this breed. Who, who is that? Pam Ca- Campbell. With my OCD, I guess I can see it taking me all day. That's what I'm saying. It takes me all day, you know, because I do have OCD. Um, Wiggle Butts, what's up? Missed your knowledge. Wow, thank you. Grooming by Kelly O. Britt O'Brien. Am I coming in late? Did you use a brush before the comb? No, I'm starting right with the comb. Because if he was more, like, curled up and bunched up, if it was really, like, uh, you know, like, like, you know, curled, you know what I'm saying? Then I would probably go through with the brush, and this is this. These are their their uh, tools, and as much as I can, I like to use the tools that they use, their own tools, so they're more familiar with it. But I probably would have broken it up with something like this or a slicker brush. But oh, look at that! Like what I'm talking about, those like grains of sand. Can you see that on my fingertip? It's big enough to you could even see it. But anyways, yeah, so, but I just, because his, I see him every five weeks and his mom does do a pretty good job combing him in between. And I got to remind myself of that, you know, and it's never going to be perfect. See, I go for perfect. I go for, I want everything out of his skin. You know, I want everything out and I want his skin to be completely clear. You know, I want to be able to run a flea comb down his body and not get a single dead hair to come out, you know, but I got to remind myself, no, because even though I do that, an hour or two later, his skin is going to produce more of this. Um, there's a book called uh, "Small Dog and Small Dog," no, "Small Animal Dermatology" by Kirk and Muller. And in it, they said that an average dog grows about sixty to seventy feet of hair per day, all along, all all over their body. So I have to remind myself that his his skin is constantly producing more hair and, and more, you know, every hair is like dying off and getting old and damaged every single day, every single hour, every single minute. So I I have to remind myself, even if I do reach perfection, which I never will, but even if I do reach perfection, an hour or two later, you're going to be able to go through it with the comb, and it'll probably catch again on on just a few spots. And that's normal. That's okay. That's natural because that's life, you know? I I remember telling people (laughs) the only way to keep a house clean is to just stop living in it. You know what I'm saying? That's the only way to keep a house clean, right? That's life. Things get messy. Things grow, things die. So I have to remind myself, just comb him through, right? Just get the comb through 
and I don't have to do all the like carding and hand stripping and all of that. Just get it to where the comb, I can work the comb through his coat all over. And then once I do that, then I'm gonna give him a bath. So I won't spend like an hour or two, you know, going through and then um, carding him with the carding tool, you know, going through with this, cause this is gonna grab even more, but we can do that after the bath, you know, after the haircut even. So <clears throat> before the bath though, not only do I like to give them a nice little comb over, but um, just to all over their body, just to make sure we get, you know, a lot of that stuff loose. And what I notice when I do this is his color starts to come back. He's actually looking more dark. Look at that. He, he doesn't look so dull anymore. It feels silkier and softer. Look at that, shinier. So his coat looks and feels more brilliant the colors are more bold you know like because that dull coat is being combed out so it's like it's like michelangelo said i do not create the beautiful dog the beautiful dog is in the he's already there i just chisel away the excess right that's exactly what michelangelo said look it up google it he said i do not create this dog i, I chisel away the excess uh dead coat that's what he said um that's what that's a quote direct quote from michelangelo <laughs> Um, you know, he's, yes, he said that also about the statue of uh, King David. He said, I did not create King David. He was already in the marble. I simply chiseled away the excess. He did say that too. But if you look it up, <laughs> if you look it up, uh, Michelangelo also said, I did not create this beautiful dog. You know, I am simply a groomer and I simply chiseled away the excess dead coat. Look it up. You know what I'm saying? Be learned. Don't be so ignorant. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so... We go through, right? And then another thing I like to do is I like to shave, do all the clothes shaving before the bath. Because just like when I used to get my hair cut, um, now my hair just naturally uh, just shapes its, and sculpts itself. I go to sleep and all of this is just shaped up and trimmed for me. I don't know how it happens. So my eyebrows even, I never pluck or trim, never. Beautifully shaped. So I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I don't know anymore. That was back when I was a mere mortal and before I did all the meditating and before I became so enlightened, when I used to go to get my hair cut like a mere mortal um, and they used to do the shaving, close shaving, my head and everything, um, it used to itch every single time. At one time I went to, I won't say the name, but I went to this one place, I got razor burn everywhere. I actually came back and I had to use the stuff that we use on dogs for razor burn. I use that, um, I forget what, what it was called, Wham, I think, um, by Nature Specialty, but I sprayed that on myself and it actually helped the razor burn, <laughs> it helped it go away. But I was like, this is what razor burn feels like. This is why dogs don't like it. Okay, so anyways, um, that's why I sanitize and clean my blades before I use them every single time. I oil them, right? You have to, because if you don't you use clean, sanitized blades, you could run the risk of irritating their skin. And their skin is much more fragile than ours. Did you know a dog's skin is actually um, more sensitive than a um, human baby skin? An infant has thicker skin, th thicker skin than a dog be because a dog only has five thin layers and it rips and tears so easily. That's why they're covered in fur to protect their sensitive skin. So if it can do, if, if a clipper can do that to us and cause irritation and cause it to burn, especially because I think that that stylist that gave me razor burn, I don't think she cleaned her tools. And so it gave me razor burn, you know, and I had to use um, a dog product to stop the burning. But anyways, that's why it's so important to clean and, and oil your blades. Because again, if it's not oiled well and it starts catching and tearing and pulling, again, that's gonna cause irritation on the dog. And their skin is more sensitive than ours, which is why we can, we can go with like very little hair on our skin, you know? But dogs, they have to have the hair to protect their sensitive skin. Okay, so here we go. Um, okay, so I'll do the pause and everything after I, in this video. I'll show the ears so, because this is going to set up how I'm going to tip the ears 
when I do the haircut. And I'll do that video when I'm doing the, when I'm finishing up the haircut and I'll do the ears. <clears throat> but tipping the ears, giving it that nice little triangle tip here at the end, and then shaping the ears here, that is going to work for Westies. It's going to work for Yorkies. It's going to work for these Viva Terriers. It's going to work for a lot of different breeds. Maybe not Scotties, because Scottish Terriers, they're supposed to have just like a puff here in front. And the ear, you know, so not Scotties, but it'll work for Westies and Yorkies. It'll work for a lot of these dogs that have this type of hair and this type of head with these ears that stick up. So then all you have to do is tip these ears and, and it'll, it'll, this little triangle will poke out. But here's how I set it up. Because I'm going to do close shaving with it to create the triangle on the inside of the ear, I'm going to do it before the bath. So <clears throat> flip the ear open. And what I like to do is I like to literally make a try, like visualize a triangle. Let me bring this closer. So you literally visualize a triangle here at the tip of the ear, right? So you see that little triangle there, right? So I'm gonna put my thumb here where that line would be. So if I put, drew a line right here, you see that triangle, right? At the tip of the ear. So I'm gonna hold right there. And then I'm gonna go, and you never wanna go in like this to get it closer. You always wanna go with the lay of the hair. Go with the direction of the hair, because if not, you run the risk of the hair pulling the clipper blade in too close to the skin, and you'll clip it and you'll cut, you'll, and it'll cause the injury, and you don't want that. So you wanna go with, Picture it like a, I, I learned this from Melissa Verplank at one of her seminars, but picture this like a leaf with all the veins going to the out, to the edges of the leaf and follow, follow those veins, right? And so work with the lay of the hair, just right there. Okay. So just right there where I had that triangle in my mind is where I shaved, right? So you won't really notice a big difference now, but after I wash him, this, and you, you know what we could do? We could even fluff it back out. Kind of like you would do on the body, comb the hair up and uh, clipper it back down. So we can even do that get it closer as long as you're going with the with the grain there we go so now that that's trimmed close you can even kind of see like a, almost a fake line right there you can almost kind of see a line right there now right so that's it i set it up so now after i wash him if that if i did shave a little too close here right and if that is itching him, I'm, at least I'm in the bath, I'm gonna clean it all out with the shampoo and the conditioner. And so that won't be itchy for him after the bath, right? And then when I finish up the haircut, I'll show you how I finish that up so that it looks like a, uh, you shaved a little triangle out here at the tip that stiff, sticks out of a nicely shaped, almost like a circle, a semicircle. So I'll show that after I get him all washed up and dried and ready for the haircut. But anyway, oh shoot, not a close up of my pores again. <laughs> so um, I've been taking skincare a lot more seriously these days, especially since um, I'm gonna be a serious YouTuber from now on, you know what I'm saying? Um, once you hit it big like I have, you, know, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta start taking skincare seriously. Um, your Biore strips, you know, I'm all about that now. Biore, no, I'm just kidding. I tried to do it the other night. I was like, I, I washed my face and put lotion on. I was like, you know, I'm good. Um, let's see here. Girls got issues. What do you do for cocker, schnauzer, bumps? Um, I just, I just try to work around it, you know, and a lot of those bumps are caused because of years and years of, of the owners not going through and actually, you know, clearing out the pores like this and getting all this stuff. See that? All this stuff that's coming out of the skin. Look at that. So those old man bumps is what they call them. Old dog bumps. They're old dog bumps because it's happening on a cellular level. It's built. It's taking years and years. And then some of these pores just get so backed up. It, 
like erupts kind of skin those skin tags and then you get those bumps you know because it um it just like fleshes over i guess you know but anyways in my opinion i'm no scientist okay um helen daniels hi june i'm listening as i'm working on a shizu nice nice uh focus on that shizu helen you know what i'm saying shoot <laughs> if that dog gets injured do not blame me um she's gonna be i was listening to this guy and he was so hilarious like out of this world hilarious like too funny i wasn't prepared you know and so I started cracking up, belly laughing. I fell to the floor, rolling the dog on the table. You know, you know, that's exactly what's going to happen, Helen. Turn this off right this minute. Get back to work. You know what I'm saying? Focus on that shows you. Huh. You should be ashamed of yourself, Helen. Okay. No way of life. <laughs> and that's how I treat my, my friends, you know, the people that watch my videos. Um, I just emailed her. Uh, not... <laughs> um, and, you know, so that's how I treat people once they get to know me. Um, let's see here. Great job, sir. Thank you, Nolly Vlogs. I'm a groomer and vlogger. Nice. Like me, a fellow groomer vlogger. Nice. Bam. You know what I'm saying? Nice to meet you. A uh, colleague. Let's see here. Cynthia. Hi, June from New Jersey. Good info, good info for my Lhasa Apso. Yes, for your Lhasa Apso. It's same, same thing. The head is different, of course, but the concept is the same. You want to get down in the skin. That's why brushing just the top layer with the slicker brush and just or with the pin, pin brush is not going to do. It's not going to help. You got to get a metal comb. It doesn't matter. This is their comb, but it doesn't matter if it's that or you don't want to use this. This is like a flea comb. This is more for finishing because I've already combed this area, so I can now. But this is just kind of getting these like eye boogers out, you know, and stuff like that. So this is more for the face for finishing. But, you know, I mean, there are different tools, but it, basically it really doesn't matter. As long as you get something that will get down to your dog's skin and pull out all of this stuff. Let me get a close-up of this because some more came out. You see all that? That's building up in your dog's skin. And then I'm. this is after five weeks. I, I, I was just here five weeks ago, and I just told you about how thorough I was. <laughs> last time I got a talking to from his mom, you know, that I took too long. And it's like, yeah, because I got carried away of getting all this stuff out of there. But again, I, I realized after this talk this morning, you know, I at least whatever I do is going to be better. It's going to be an improvement from what when I started, right? And so I got to back off and tone it down a little bit, you know, turn down for what? Well, turn down because I got to consider other people's feelings, you know, and the dog's feelings. So that's why I got turned down for what <laughs> um so yeah so i'm gonna just get him combed out and now he's ready for the bath i'm just gonna do his bottom of his feet do his sanitary area and then wash him up dry him up and then uh, we'll do the haircut that's when i'll stream back on this channel again and show how i finish up this ear now that we started on the inside this triangle how we finish it up on the outside and give it that nice round look where it looks like there's little tips sticking out uh, triangle tips. So let's see here. Uh, wiggle buds. Any recommendations on reversing those bumps? No, but I do have a lab where he had um, these big elbow patches, you know, where the skin callus is over and there's no more hair. Those big elbow patches that labs get because they're always like laying on there. Um, and the hair has grown back now. I've been grooming him for like, what, five years now, five, six years. And I I thought that that once it gets like that, I thought it never grew back. But by clear by combing it out and brush, you know, because even though he doesn't have skin, I'll still comb out the areas that doesn't have skin, like down here, like in between the thighs, you know, because the skin still needs to get cleared out, right? So I was doing that with the lab, even though he didn't have skin there, I would still because stuff would come out. I would feel the comb and everything. I would feel a catch. On, on, on stuff and it would come and dandruff and stuff would come out and doing that and then shampoo, conditioner and by giving the skin the right conditions to function properly, it was able to heal itself and now hair has grown back on his elbow patches. He doesn't have elbow patches anymore. You know, it's like, whoa, that really opened my eyes and showed me mm -hmm, pro pro proper skin care is my responsibility. Yeah, I do, I do a good enough haircut so that I can keep coming back because that's all, if I do a horrible haircut, I'm not gonna get to come back, right? Because that's all people see and care about and that's all people pay for. 
um, in their mind. In my mind, they're paying me to do this. Well, not this, <laughs> but this. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, I realized, like, wow, what, I have a heavy responsibility. You know, my responsibility is to be the caretaker for their skin and coat. You know, I'm the first line of defense for their health. You know, like, wow, I'm the gatekeeper. Like, I almost wanted to quit my job. <laughs> I was like, I didn't sign up for all this. You know, I just wanted to play around with dogs and sing Disney songs. That's what I wanted them to do. That's what I signed up for. And you can still do that. You can still play with them a little bit. And you can sing Disney songs, but you still have a heavy responsibility to work, do, do, do the effort, put in the effort, do the work necessary to give their skin the right environment to function normally so that it can heal itself and grow a beautiful coat. Because it's not clean skin i mean it's not clean hair that, that smells like blueberries or pomegranate or whatever the fuck i'm sorry um it's not fruity smelling hair that's gonna do anything for the skin and also the length of the hair or how long or short it is that also will do nothing for the health of their skin that's just for our aesthetic pleasure you know so that the dog looks nice to us but the length of the hair how long or short it is has nothing to do, or how it smells, has nothing to do with the health of the skin. This has everything to do with the health of the skin. Getting in there, oh my goodness, and getting that rough coat out. I can feel it. Okay, see, you could even see the comb catching it. This is my duty, my responsibility, because once I take care of the skin, and I help the skin breathe and function properly, then the skin will grow beautiful, healthy hair, right? It's not my job to make the hair nice and beautiful. My job is to take care of the skin so the skin grows healthy, beautiful hair. Um, let me see here. Uh, let's see. What blade do you use on the ears? I use the 10 blade, 10 blade which is, I think, 1.5 millimeters, I think. Um, let me see. Helen's so funny, June. See, I told you, Helen, she's still watching. She fell over. Look at that. It's because I'm so funny. Like, I don't even try. I don't even try to be funny. No, I was kidding. I do try so hard. I try too hard, which is why a lot of my jokes fall flat, because people see. They're like, dude, you tried too hard. Mm -mm. It's like, yeah, I know. I rushed the punchline. I was too eager. Anyways. Um, uh, Wigglebutt says, amazing, thank you. I know, <laughs> aren't I Aren't I so amazing? I'm about to get fired too, because she specifically told me, don't take too long. Um, Girls got issues, awesome. On the dry elbows, I have a Shizu rescue that has this whole back and, and back end scabbed over and, ba and black, black end, black because of years of living in a cage. Oh my God, and that black, they call it black skin disease, alopecia X, that's fungus. So uh, use antifungal shampoo. Don't treat that because a lot of times um, when the skin turns black and they say it's old oh, black skin disease, alopecia, eggs, they'll give you antibacterial shampoos and all that stuff. No, you're actually helping the fungus. And that's what um, I, I learned it from Dr. Um, I think her name was Adelia. She she started uh, Derm Magic, a shampoo bar company. I think they, they also make liquid form shampoo now. But um, she is a, she's the founder of Derm Magic. She's a chemist, a doctor. So anyways... Um, but yeah, she was the one that told me um, a lot of a lot of dogs suffer and they never get better because they're treating the wrong thing. They're treating for bacteria when it's actually fungal. Um, because she she explained to me the way it works is there's bacteria and fungus on living on their bodies, trillions of them at all times, um, and there, it's a natural balance. Like I said, it's like a rainforest here. It's a natural flora. There's a balance. But whenever something happens, um, hormonal change, something, stress, you know, whatever, um, even, it could even just be environment change, the change in pH. Um, whenever the balance gets knocked off, uh, fungus always wins over bacteria. That's why penicillin works as an antibacterial or amoxicillin. These are funguses that, that um, eat up the bacteria's food so that bacteria starves to death, basically. So that's what's happening. Um, something living in the cage for years will probably do it. <laughs> Pissing and shitting on himself for years, probably do it. Um, something knocked off the balance of that dog's skin. 
And so now the fungus has taken over. Now that's why, you know, hence the black skin and it stopped growing hair probably. There's probably balls and stuff. And so treat the fungus. And actually um, try Derm Magic, dermmagic.com, D-E-R-M-A-G-I-C.com. Derm Magic, try the bar sam- sh- uh, shampoo and conditioner because the liquid form is good. It's the same, but they have to use preservatives. Whenever you get a liquid shampoo, they have to use preservatives because it's liquid now, you know, they don't want it to go bad. So um, the, with the bar sam- shampoo, because it's dry, they don't have to use preservatives. It's all natural. So get the bar shampoo. Um, let's see, Myra Aguilar, I love how passionate you are about what you do. We need more humans like June in the world. <laughs> no, the world would be destroyed. You know how clumsy, like everybody in the world would be dropping the ball whenever <laughs> it was clutch time, you know? Um, so yeah, no, one of me is enough. You know what I'm saying? The world, <laughs> the world is burdened enough. Uh, Cassandra says, I'm so glad I caught you during a live video. Yay. No, Cassandra, look at you. You just wanted a shout out. You just wanted me to say your name, you know, like, oh my goodness. I'm kidding. That's how I treat people. You know, <laughs> that's how I treat people. If you ever meet me and come up to me and say, hey, dear, you know, I'm going to just put you down. I'm going to insult you, uh, be rude. And then when you start crying, I'm going to say, oh, oh boo hoo, look at that. And I'm going to laugh and skip away. You know, that's how I do. So, um, yeah, hopefully you find the courage, work up the courage to come and say hi to me if you ever see me in public. <laughs> Anyways, oh, good. She laughed. Yeah, she got the joke. Good. Thank you, Cassandra. I'm an, ed- I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot and I'm also an asshole. You combine those two, you come up with really bad jokes. So anyways, oh, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry, Jay. <laughs> I had to snap him back into action. He, he was about to fall asleep. I can't have him sleeping on the job. I'm working here. I'm working. You're working. We're all working. All right. Let me get back to work. Uh, hopefully my client won't watch this and fire me. See you guys. Um, if I don't stream the finishing tip of the ears and how to do that, uh, you'll know I got fired. I'm, I've packed my bags and I'm on the way home crying. <laughs> Gripping the steering wheel, anxiety, and I'm crying because I lost my job. See you guys. <laughs>